Our next speaker is Elizabeth Lee. Trained as an archaeologist, she is the vice president of SciArc, a non, an international nonprofit organization based in Oakland, California, whose mission is to digitally capture, archive, and make accessible the world's heritage sites. Elizabeth? Okay, th thank you um, for the invitation, Stefan, and uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, there's been some wonderful presentations this morning. Um, I'm going to be speaking in particular about a joint initiative between um, SciArc, ECOMOS, and Yale's uh, Institute for the Preservation of Cultural Heritage. Um, we called it Project Anka uh, for the Arabic word for the phoenix. And the premise is that while there's been recent destruction and catastrophic destruction in some cases, it represents a, a fraction of, of the total sites in the area that can be effective, uh, affected and that um, physically safeguarding some of these sites uh, can be very problematic, but it is possible to proactively document the sites um, and have that record available for the future. So as I mentioned, it's a, it's a partnership between um, the International Council on Monuments and Sites, and in particular we heard from uh, Samir Abdulluk, um, who's chair of the Working Group for Safeguarding um, Syrian and Iraq Cultural Heritage. Uh, they've been instrumental in identifying um, partners and, and uh, ways to move forward on the ground. And Yale has come on board as well as a partner in the project to help in the uh, dissemination and scholarly annotation of the data collected. Uh, some of you may not know that much about SciArc, so I will give a brief introduction on, on uh, SciArc. Uh, we're a nonprofit or NGO organization with our headquarters in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, we've, we were a pioneer in the use of 3D scanning for cultural heritage and have been doing so since about 2003. Uh, we have over 200 sites, uh, cultural heritage sites, in our archive. And um, we work very closely with uh, the Ministries of Culture, State Boards of Antiquities on the ground to perform this work. Uh, perhaps the best example of, of why we exist um, is uh, from a project in um, at the Kasubi Tombs in Uganda. Um, this was back in about 2009. Uh, we, through a crew, um, captured the monument. And uh, this is the laser scan data. So the machine uh, sends out these pulsed beams of light and captures uh, data points every couple of millimeters on the structure. And what that does is it allows us to visualize the site like this. Um, but that record um, is then archived uh, for the future. It's made available um, to the public for interpretation, uh, but it can also be used to extract blueprints of the monument. So when just a year after the um, work, the 3D scanning work had been performed, the site uh, was a victim of arson. And so you know, very quickly within the days following the fire, we were contacted. We sent these blueprints to the site, and um, they were able to begin reconstruction. Um, so the data within our archive is more than just sort of a pretty picture. It's able to, to help inform these restoration efforts, and that's why we got um, involved in this, um, how, we, how we can proactively document some of these sites. So we use a suite of technology. Um, so everything from the scanner that I mentioned, we use drones um, to document the sites, and then we also use a close-range scanning to get highly detailed information of things like mosaics and frescoes. Um, so when we started this project, Anka, it was all about how, how we can get into um, the, the most um, urgent areas. And uh, earlier this year, we were able to take a substantial step forward uh, with an initial training of the Directorate General of Antiquities and Museums. Uh, five of their staff members traveled to Beirut we did two, two days of training um, at the UNESCO offices there. UNESCO was wonderful in providing space and also doing a lot of the coordination. Um, and then we were able to do a practical uh, hands-on uh, training at the Sursak Museum in Beirut. So these, these, um, these are um, employees of the DJM uh, came and over the course of three days were able to master the technology. Um, and the tech went back with them into Damascus. So you know, we did classroom exercises and we also did the practical experience. Um, and they're now back, uh, the DJM has uh, selected a list of priority monuments working with uh, the ECOMOS uh, working group. Um, this is the first site that they're working on in Damascus. So this is back in Syria. They're doing this work um, and then sending back the data for review. 
So in this case, we're, we're getting this, building this on the ground inventory of um, the structures and um, we will have this data for use in any kind of uh, reconstruction or rehabilitation. Um, and uh, we'll also be able to use it beyond that. In terms of what's next, there's a lot more to do in Syria. There are a lot of discussions now in terms of what will happen with a site like Palmyra, um, especially um, reconstruction efforts. So there's a lot of work that can be done in doing this documentation before any uh, efforts on the ground take place. So we know exactly what exists today. And so we're looking forward to doing that in collaboration with the DGAM. Um, and then we want to expand to other countries. Uh, Project Anka is envisioned as uh, this emergency documentation of at-risk areas. So moving beyond just Syria and Iraq into other places that are susceptible but are still accessible is, is a big uh, urgent need. Uh, so we welcome any kind of collaboration and, and we also will be sharing the materials. Uh, the last point I will leave in terms of what's next, um, you know, the practical applications for heritage conservation and management are, are really well understood with this data. Um, the thing that's kind of coming next is really being able to use this digital data to connect people to these places. Um, and, and so this is from an example of a museum that we work with in Austria called the Ars Electronica. They're doing life-size 3D projections of sites within our archive um, as a way to connect people to these places that you know, can seem really far-flung, um, that this data can make it real, can keep these sites relevant and keep um, the stories and the, and the people connected. So thank you.